Justin Trudeau's unforced error. I'm Brian Lilly with the Rebel.media. Did you hear about Trudeau going on 60 Minutes on CBS with a huge audience and insulting Americans? I gotta tell you, I'm not happy about it. It might surprise you, but when Justin Trudeau goes on the world stage, I want him to do well, very well. And the reason is simple, he represents Canada. Most outsiders won't care about our internal squabbles between liberals and conservatives. They just know, hey, here comes the leader of Canada. So Trudeau going and doing an interview with Vanity Fair like he did a while back, I might mock parts of it, but I want him to make the country look good. And it should be like that with every one of our elected leaders. Because as Trudeau himself hints at, it can be tough for Canada to get international media attention. I remember during the 2008-2009 financial meltdown, world economies are falling apart, major banks in the US, Britain, France, elsewhere, they're either collapsing or threatening to collapse. And in the middle of it all, Canada is doing very well. In fact, if you remember back to that time when it seemed like the G20 was meeting every few weeks to discuss how to deal with the financial crisis, Canada played a leading role. Prime Minister Stephen Harper was sought out. He led important meetings. Bank of Canada Governor Mark Carney, he headed up an important international committee on banking regulations. And still, it was tough for Canada to get noticed. So the team around Harper actually hired former Clinton and Bush PR guys to get Canada some notice and buzz in the business media. It was great. But with Justin Trudeau, well, he's young and dreamy and progressive, so the media in the United States, they're flocking to him. He doesn't need a PR team. His profile on 60 Minutes was an opportunity to showcase Canada to what is still a substantial audience. 60 Minutes pulls in 10 million people in a regular week, and getting 10 million people to think good things about Canada is great. Now. I've heard the criticism of the interview. It was puffball. 60 Minutes and Lara Logan, a normally very brave reporter, well, they threw it with Trudeau. But I never expected anything more than a nice little profile piece. But even with a puff piece, Trudeau had to go and blow it by insulting Americans. When he said he wished they knew more about the world, he was essentially calling the American people dumb and ignorant. I just felt like it might be nice if they paid a little more attention to the world. So having uh, a little more of a, an awareness of what's going on in the rest of the world, uh, I think is, is what many Canadians would hope for Americans. This is the liberal reflex, isn't it? They can't help themselves. They've got to go for the automatic anti-American comment. Come to think of it, too many conservatives do it as well. It's the nasty Canadian coming out. But Trudeau's comments aren't just some guy sitting on a bar stool trash talking about his latest trip to Buffalo or Duluth. Now, it's the prime minister of the country next door saying, Americans aren't that smart. They need to know more about the world. A few points here. One, Trudeau doesn't have a leg to stand on, and I'll show you why in a minute. Two, in my experience, Americans are actually knowledgeable about the world. It's true. We've all seen the studies, the reports that will say so many Americans can't pick out their state on a map or they can't identify other countries. Guess what? The same can be said of many Canadians. Just as some Canadians are tuned out and clueless, and some are tuned in and know what's going on, the same goes with Americans. But Trudeau just smeared them all with the same brush, an entire country. I've traveled extensively in the States. I've been involved with American media, some of the biggest names in the business for the last 15 years. They are clued into what's happening in the world because often America is at the center of it negotiating with Iran or North Korea, trying to settle peace in the Middle East, rightly or wrongly. And I don't know how many news conferences Mr. Trudeau has been to with American presidents, but I know I've been to more with both President Bush and President Obama. And the tradition is that when they're, well, in these sorts of news conferences, there's two questions with foreign leaders. In American media, they're usually asking the president about what's happening in some far-flung part of the world. As for Trudeau's record on understanding the world, you got to remember, this is the man who said, in response to a planted question at a fundraiser, that he loves China's basic dictatorship. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime. Not only does he love China's basic dictatorship, when he said this in 2013, he said, well, their basic dictatorship allowed them to go green on a dime when they weren't even doing that. They were building coal plants at breakneck speed. 
Remember also, this is a man who was asked in the middle of the ISIS march to Baghdad in 2014. While Israel was fighting off daily attacks from Hamas, he was asked what the greatest threat to world peace and global security was, and he said fairness. The biggest threat to global security is uh, uh, the kind of violence and, uh, uh, and uh, misunderstandings and uh, wars uh, that come out of uh, resource depletion, economic uncertainty, uh, concerns of uh, lack of hope for generations growing up in, uh, in a world that is getting smaller and uh, seemingly less and less fair. Then there's the fact that at his first big meeting, his first big international shindig after being elected PM, he couldn't remember the name of the Mexican president he was speaking about. He mixed up China and Japan. I mean, why didn't he just say, I don't know, they all look the same to me. He may as well have. And yet Trudeau wants to go on American TV and lecture American audiences about what they know about the world? Don't think they didn't notice this. Sure, CBC, they're going to do stories telling you about all the great tweets showing admiration for Trudeau from progressives. But last Friday, the story about his lecture was a red headline at the top of the Drudge Report, linking to an Associated Press story about his comment saying Americans didn't know enough. That story spread far and wide in newspapers, across many news websites. It was on talk radio. If he'd been able to help himself, then Trudeau could have just had a great publicity day for Canada. But he couldn't. He had to take the shot. He had to go anti-American. Pity for us and shame on him.